Joining us now with insight about the state of COVID testing in the U.S. and what you need to know, ABC News contributor Dr. John Brownstein. Doctor, thanks so much for spending this Friday with us. Of course, good to be here. There are several different kinds of COVID tests, as you know. Break them down for us. What are the differences and what is considered the most effective? Yeah, it's such a confusing landscape out there. I'm not surprising that most people are really just, you know, they're being battered with all sorts of different information about different tests. Now, there's two sort of different classes of tests. One are the antibody tests, which tell you whether you've maybe had a prior infection to COVID, and then the diagnostic tests. And those can come into two flavors. One is the PCR molecular test, which is looking for uh, DNA, RNA, uh, and the other test, which is the uh, antigen test. And those are the faster tests. They're looking for protein, but are not as accurate as the PCR tests. And so the gold standard that we're looking for right now are those PCR tests, even though those are in short supply and taking long periods of time to return results. And that's really the big concern that we have right now. And the FDA just approved a new saliva test that will hopefully be available at a pharmacy for self-testing eventually. This sounds promising, but there are caveats, right? Yeah, absolutely. So of course, we're so excited about this new saliva test, but we we, this is not a test that you can just do on your own and get a quick, rapid uh, response. This is still a test that needs to be sent to a lab. What's exciting about it is, A, it uses saliva, so it's less invasive than using the nasal uh, swab. And then also, number two, it, it skips some important steps in terms of extraction of RNA. So we're very excited because it can help sort of uh, make it faster to return a result, but you still need that lab in order to, to get to the actual result of your test. You talked about the invasiveness of that nasal swab, why is it still the preferred method? Yeah, the nasal swab is still sort of the gold standard, and this is because that's where the virus is living. And if you really want to ensure an accurate test and make sure that you can identify active infection, you need to go deep down in there and, and identify the virus. Now, that being said, these new saliva tests that are starting to hit the market are showing uh, a similar accuracy. And so we're very sort of hopeful that we'll be able to start uh, using these new tests that are less invasive and can be deployed uh, to many people, um, and especially when we think about kids and the concerns we have about kids and, and getting you know rapid testing, this is a very exciting point for us. And speaking of those rapid tests, under what circumstances should you take one of those versus that more invasive PCR test? Now, we have this trade-off with different tests, right? The rapid test can return results quickly and give you information. The PCR tests are more accurate and are not going to generate false negatives. And that's a real concern because a false negative might give you false information about you being infectious and they're thereby helping spread the virus. But uh, the rapid test can be incredibly effective if you're symptomatic, if you're in a contact tracing, or if you're doing serial testing. For instance, you're a worker at a nursing home and you need rapid testing and you're doing it frequently, that's when a rapid test can be incredibly valuable. Doctor, as you alluded to, the lag times on test results have been a really big issue across the country. Right now, it can take up to 10 days or even more in some places to get those results. Does this delay mean that you might want to consider a rapid test? It might be more practical? Yeah, so exactly. So you have this trade-off in accuracy and timeliness. If timeliness is getting you about 10 days for results, it's basically useless because now you're out beyond the point of when you could have done something like isolate yourself and really mitigated sort of the impact of you spreading the virus to others. So a 10-day delay is probably just completely useless. At that point, a rapid test that's not as accurate is still better than, than nothing, really. For those of us who are sending kids back to school, should we be getting our kids tested even if the school doesn't require it and which test do you recommend for kids? Yeah, so clearly many schools are thinking about testing. Many parents are now thinking about what do you do as you re-enter. Now, getting some baseline uh, testing prior to entry is, is, of course, a good idea if it's available and you can do it. Um, right now, the PCR test, which is the gold standard and the most accurate, is actually the best test for kids. There are ongoing studies now looking at the value of rapid tests in the pediatric population. But right now, there's not a ton of results, especially since kids experience the virus in very different ways and they don't have the same levels of symptoms. So right now, the, the, the gold standard PCR test is absolutely the way to go. If you haven't seen any symptoms, you're asymptomatic for COVID-19, is it worth getting tested and how frequently would you recommend doing so? And what about antibody testing? Should you go ahead and get an antibody test? 
Yeah, these are questions that everyone is asking, you know, should you be getting tested? Now, we know that testing is in short supply. Not everyone should be getting a test. Everybody should be wearing a mask and everybody should be doing their part to slow the spread of this virus. Testing really has to be done in cases where you're an essential worker, your healthcare provider, your you know, students going back to school um, where there's serial testing that's needed, or of course, if you're traveling or if you're about to get a procedure, there's specific reasons for getting a test, but just because of the fact that a test is available doesn't mean that everyone should just immediately go out and get one. Experts are now saying there may be a limit for how long you have antibodies once you've had COVID-19. Can you get infected again with COVID-19 if you've already had it? And can you also transmit this virus? Yeah, the biggest question has been sort of reinfection with COVID. A lot of my colleagues have been researching this, this issue around immunity. And what they're finding is this virus is no different than any other sort of virus, you know, respiratory virus that we've experienced in a population. You get a big spike of you know antibodies and that sort of wanes over time, but we don't see a lot of data associated with reinfection. So generally the idea is if you got it once, you're not likely gonna get it at least again for, for a long extended period. Now, a lot more work has to be done in this space, but generally that is the current hypothesis. Um, on antibody testing, you know, again, th this helps identify whether you had a previous exposure. It doesn't re really change much in terms of your behavior. The antibody tests have been incredibly valuable for us to understand sort of what level the population has been exposed to the virus, where we are in terms of herd immunity, and where we need to get to in order to, to really stomp out this virus. If you've had COVID-19, can you still be a vector for the virus in the future? You know, the likelihood is low. We haven't seen um, that as a possibility. It's possible that you may, you know, have some level of virus in your nose, even if you're not infected and you may be able to, to spread it to others. But currently that isn't considered to be the main, you know, mode of transmission. It's those that are have active infection that are spreading the virus through coughing and sneezing and touching each other. Um, and that's again why, you know, mask wearing is just such an important part of the way we're gonna get out of this pandemic. Dr. Brownstein, we really appreciate you breaking down the complexities of this issue with us. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.